Two weeks ago, the Copy Posse finally hit 200,000 followers on Instagram. Oh my God, yes, finally, I started that account back with zero followers in 2019. So how did I grow it from zero to 200,000 followers in just four years? Well, that is exactly what I'm talking about in this video today, including the number one thing you should start doing in your captions right now to drive the retention rate of your audience up to as much as 65 to 70%. Keep watching. Hey Posse, what's up? It's Alex and welcome back to my channel where I dish out all the tips, tools, and strategies you need to grow your online empire. I am back in my studio, so thanks for bearing with me as I traveled. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe below so you can get even more videos like this one on all things social media, marketing, copywriting, branding, and more. And after you're done with that, go ahead and hit that bell to be notified when my next video goes live. But first, in this video, I'm gonna share the biggest social media tips and lessons that I've learned from growing my Instagram following from scratch. And let me tell you, the last tip is pure gold, it honestly changed everything for me. Because if you haven't noticed, the reach of an average Instagram post is way down this year compared to last year. No, you aren't imagining it. I thought too, so I looked it up. According to a recent Instagram study done by Metricool that analyzed hundreds of thousands of professional Instagram accounts and millions of posts, stories, and reels, the average reach of reels is still twice as much as feed posts, but across the board, reach has been reduced by up to 76% compared to last year. Yeah, that means that growth is a lot harder than it was before on Instagram, but, 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 if you can get your audience to stick with you and engage with you, those Instagram followers you do get are worth way more to you. And that is why retention is so freaking important right now. So I'm gonna share with you the number one thing you should start doing in your captions today to drive the retention rate of your audience up to as much as 65 to 70%, plus three super detailed examples of exactly how I do this, I will show you three posts in action. Now, I am convinced that this has massively contributed to my growth, but no, not just to Instagram followers, because honestly, followers don't really mean much these days, and that can be a slow process. I mean, it took me for freaking ever to go from 198,000 to 200,000. I am talking about growth in my business, which means more cash in my bank account, which let's be honest, is really what matters when you're an entrepreneur or content creator. But before we get to that, pay close attention to every tip I'm about to share because they really need to be done together to be the most effective. So let's count them down. Here are my top five tips for growing on Instagram right now. Number five, actually show up consistently. So you know this one already. You are not gonna achieve much growth on Instagram or any other platform for that matter if you're not putting in the work and actually showing up. And yes, it does take work, especially in this world of instant gratification that we live in today. We are addicted to this idea of going viral and we think that if we're not doing that, well then we must be doing something wrong. But I am here to tell you the exact opposite is often true. So if you haven't gone viral or had an overnight explosion in your following, you are not doing anything wrong. Growing your audience online is a long game. If you can reframe your thinking and ditch this unrealistic fantasy of waking up tomorrow and suddenly having thousands of new followers, then you've already won half the battle. In fact, probably more. <laughs> it can be super discouraging to keep showing up when you're not seeing the results that you want or what people talk about in YouTube videos. But trust me, keep going. It takes time and it takes consistency. And honestly, I don't really think how often you post is what truly matters. As I said before, it's not the frequency that's important, but the consistency. Do not post and then ghost. When I first started, I was posting maybe two to three times a week on Instagram, and that's because I was working solo. But then I hired a social media manager and we went to posting once a day, and then we started posting twice a day, but honestly, that was just too much. I was getting sick of me. <laughs> so we moved back to once a day, sometimes twice a day if we're in the middle of a launch or a campaign, and that really works for us right now, but hey, we might change it in the future. In general though, the more often you post, the faster you will grow, but it's going to backfire if you can't stay consistent. So whatever you do, do not overcommit. The key takeaway here is decide how often you wanna show up, create a plan, and then stick to it. All right, the next thing you need to keep in mind if you wanna grow, number four, deliver real value. People are generally on social media for one of three reasons, to be entertained, to be educated or to be inspired. 
they are not on social media to shell out all of their hard earned money. <laughs> of course, this does happen and that is great news for us marketers and copywriters and those of us who sell things on the internet, but it is not the goal that most of us have when we absentmindedly open our apps to doom scroll. So what this means for you as a person who wants to grow your social following to hopefully one day be able to sell stuff to them is to give real value and stop always trying to sell something. Now, when I say stop always trying to sell something, I'm not talking about the very obvious promotional posts, which by the way, I do do when I'm in a launch or a promotion, but not all of the time. But I'm also talking about those sneaky cold outreach DMs that smell like a sales pitch from a mile away. The market is savvier than ever and they know what you're trying to do. So instead, when you're first starting to grow on Instagram, forget about only trying to convince people that they need what you have to offer. I personally like to make sure my posts always follow what I call the four pillars of social media content. One, promotional posts, those ones I just mentioned, where you're clearly promoting your product or service to your audience, which, hey, that is great as long as they're balanced with educational posts where you're delivering some sort of value in the form of free education or inspiration, personal posts where you're building rapport with your audience, letting them know more about you, your personal story, your quirks, your likes, and all the things you might think are irrelevant to your business but your audience really loves. And lastly, engagement posts. So this is your opportunity to engage with your audience, ask them questions, and uncover their needs, wants, and desires. So I break down all four of these pillars in much more detail, including examples and swipe copy for you to use in my free cheat sheet for writing and click worthy captions and CTAs, and you can download a free copy of that in the description box below. All right, next tip, it is almost unbelievable how many people overlook this. Number three, engage with your audience. I know this one is simple, but it needs to be brought up because unfortunately this is really uncommon today and it's so sad. Everyone's trying to automate and systematize and they don't pay attention to real conversations. Never overlook the importance of replying to your comments and DMs. When you don't reply to your messages, you're basically saying, I'm too busy for you, or you don't matter enough for me to respond to you, which is not how you're going to build a loyal following who one day might decide they actually want to buy from you. So you might think that these two things are unrelated, but when your followers know they can count on you to reply, then they're more likely to comment on your posts, tag you in their stories, and of course, share your brand with other people in their networks. And this is huge because you're getting higher engagement, word of mouth marketing is working in your favor, and you're teaching the algorithm that people find your content useful, which yes, increases your chances of getting shown to new people, all because you replied to someone. So it's simple, but it can make such a drastic difference. All right, before we get into the juiciest secret of them all, let's cover the basics of a well-written caption because you know that copy matters. Number two, copywriting basics. Remember the main reason that people are on social media is to be educated, entertained, or inspired. So every single caption you write has to deliver that sort of experience for your audience. And you cannot do this with terribly written captions. So a really good rule of thumb to follow when you're writing Instagram or any type of social media captions is to remember your ABCs. First, you need to capture attention. Like anywhere on social media, the first sentence of your caption is prime real estate. If your first sentence isn't captivating, then the reader won't tap that more link that truncates the rest of your caption. So putting a lot of effort here is a really good first step. Next, you need to provide a benefit or big value in the form of education, entertainment, or inspiration, right? Because once you have your reader's attention comes the hardest part, you need to keep them engaged and reading. And this goes back to the adding real value part. So retention is key here, which we're going to dive into more in just a minute. And the final part of your caption, yes, it needs to have a strong close. In other words, give your readers a call to action copywriting 101 whether it's to save or share or like or comment or buy tell them what you want them to do okay are you ready for it? Are you ready? Here is the number one skill you need to master if you want to grow a robust social media following. Number one, the biggest secret for writing great captions is knowing how to tell relatable stories that create emotional resonance with your readers. And in just a moment, I'm gonna share with you three examples of exactly how I do this so you can see it in action, but it all comes down to the very simple fact that humans relate to humans. We wanna feel seen. We wanna feel like we belong. We want to feel understood and we want to feel connected to one another. And we want those things, whether we're looking for a product or service to buy or whether we're choosing which accounts to follow on Instagram. And this isn't just a biased opinion or theory. 
delivery. According to a London Business School study, storytelling can drive the retention rate of your audience up to as much as 65 to 70%. So what the study found was that if you tell someone just straight facts, like listing off a bunch of stats or benefits, then people are only five to 10% likely to remember what you said. But if you tell someone the same facts or benefits through a story, they are 65 to 70% more likely to remember what you said. That is a huge boost. So if you really wanna grow and build a thriving community that happily buys from you and keep them engaged long-term, then yes, using storytelling is absolutely key. But what does it actually mean to tell a story in your caption? No, you don't need to devise some epic tale for every single caption you write. That would be very time consuming. Storytelling is actually a lot simpler and easier than you probably think. And it comes down to one simple maxim. Show, don't tell. You don't wanna just tell your audience something. You wanna communicate your message through an engaging, personal, and real life demonstration through, yes, storytelling. This makes what the reader learns more memorable and it helps them actually feel more connected to you. So here are some real life examples from some of my more recent top performing Instagram posts. So this post was promoting a free workshop. We promoted the workshop every day for a week and this post was by far the best performing. Here's what the caption said. Wanna know the one thing I did to make a million dollars in one year? Comment big idea below to join me live at my free workshop in two days. That's right. One thing made me a millionaire, one thing. And it's not some quick hack, weird trick, or some other generic and overused marketing secret or mindset advice. Okay, that was a lot of sarcastic air quotes and eye rolls. <laughs> it is real, it's simple, and it's something you can do too. I picked one problem that I could solve for one person. And I focused on doing that one thing really well over and over and over again. I became obsessed with it. I didn't let shiny object syndrome come along and take me in a different direction. I didn't waste time or resources going down every new rabbit hole or trying to hop on every new trend. I stayed focused, I stayed persistent, I stayed in my own lane and I didn't worry about what other people were doing. I kept showing up over and over and over again and then I got there. I made my first million in the first year of my business and it only got bigger from there. Building your dream business does not have to be complicated. In fact, it should be the exact opposite. Need help? Get yourself signed up for my free Big Idea Workshop happening this Thursday. I'll help you map out your money-making, industry-shaking business, and you'll even walk away with your very own one-page blueprint to help you get into action and start making money as quickly as possible. Comment Big Idea below to save your seat. So notice that I didn't just say, hey, I'm running a free workshop and you should sign up. I told a story and a very compelling story that made a lot of people wanna pay attention. I mean, who doesn't wanna be a millionaire, right? The hook was really great, but it wasn't clickbait, right? Because in my caption, I actually deliver on my promise and tell you exactly how I became a millionaire, which was doing one thing really well over and over again. But structuring my caption in this way really allowed me to pull my audience in with a story which kept them reading and engaged, rather than just saying, hey, I did this thing and it made me a millionaire and sign up for my free workshop to find out how I did it. So do you see the difference there? All right, so let's look at another example. Okay, so this is another promotional post but you'd never guess it until the very end because the entire caption is just delivering a ton of value in the form of a story so here we go the perfect upsell and a story yesterday I was at the salon down the street getting a blow-dry I had a bunch of video content to record and I have been so busy this week with the launch so I decided to treat myself plus anyone with long hair knows that you basically plan your whole life around hair washing days <laughs> while sitting in the chair one of the stylists approached me and pitched the perfect upsell she said hey I'm offering a special on makeup right now and I can do a nice natural look for you while you get your hair done Boom, sold, I immediately said yes, more than doubling the amount I paid at checkout, by the way. Genius, and it got me thinking about the three components of the perfect upsell. Timely, it's presented at the perfect time on your customer's journey. I was literally sitting there doing nothing with zero makeup on and an hour to kill. Relevant, it makes sense for what's going on in your customer's life. I was obviously getting my hair done for a reason, so makeup was likely the next thing on my mind. Complimentary, it's related to whatever the customer just bought. I walked in there looking like a hot mess and I walked out of there with my entire beauty routine done. When upsells don't convert, it's likely because it's missing one of these three things or all of them. 
If the stylist had approached me and tried to upsell me on a personal training session, a facial, or even a haircut, I definitely would have said no. And to be honest, if she tried to upsell me when I called to schedule my appointment, I probably would have said no then too. An upsell is not some arbitrary thing that you slap together to make more money. It needs to be done intentionally. Inside Storm, I teach you all about offer creation, where you'll learn how to create, template, and automate offers that bring in serious sales. So you can give your customers what they actually want and position it in a way where they'll say, boom, sold. Comment Storm 5 to learn about my step-by-step -step marketing program. So this caption really reads like a friend is telling you a story about something that happened to them that day, right? And this is key. You should aim for all of your captions to really read like they are coming from a friend. And after I told my story, I delivered some value on the three components of the perfect upsell. Then I talk a little bit about why upsells don't work. And then I finally pivot into promoting my marketing program, Storm. So while this post is promotional, it doesn't really feel like it, right? It's very useful, and even if my audience doesn't buy when they finish reading that caption, I hope they gain something valuable from it, which keeps them coming back to read more of my content even if they don't intend to buy right away, which is absolutely what you want because customers are taking longer and longer to buy now, so the more value you provide, the more likely they are to come back. All right, so let's take a look at a post that actually isn't promoting anything, and the caption reads, how I made copywriting my full-time job. This pic is a throwback to me in 2011. I had just quit my full-time job and was about to start my freelance business after a month spent in the Philippines enjoying my newfound freedom, of course. What you might not know about me is that I actually started out my freelancing career offering marketing support. I'd work with clients who needed help mapping out funnels, offers, launches, etc. But time and time again, these clients would ask me if I knew anyone who could write copy for them. I didn't. And I was extremely resistant to start offering copywriting as a service. Even though I had spent years learning copywriting from many of the OG copywriting and marketing legends, I still didn't consider myself a copywriter. Imposter syndrome is a real B, am I right? I tell my clients, I mean, sure, I can write copy for you, but it won't be that good. Turned out, I was pretty good at it, and I was helping my clients get amazing results. Pretty soon, I started getting referrals, and those clients wanted me to write copy for them too, so I went all in. And within a few years, I was making over $300,000 a year as a freelance copywriter and marketing consultant. It wasn't a straight path, and it certainly did not happen overnight. It all started with the decision to believe in myself, to bet on myself, take a leap of faith, and try something new, even though it scared the crap out of me. I didn't want to swear on YouTube. <laughs> in the beginning, I had no idea I'd end up where I am today, but I trusted the process and I allowed my path to reveal itself over time. And along the way, I discovered my passion. How cool is that? So I don't know who needs to hear this today, but say yes now and figure it out later. If you can trust yourself and have the courage to bet on yourself, I have all the faith in the world that everything will work out exactly as it's meant to. Drop me some claps below if you're ready to say heck yes to yourself and your dreams. Okay, so this post definitely falls under the inspiration category, right? But what I'm actually doing here is revealing more about me that I know a good majority of my audience can relate to. So I'm using empathy and making my audience feel understood. A lot of the people who follow me on Instagram are copywriters or aspiring copywriters, really you know, struggling with the same doubts. So this post is really geared towards making them feel validated about their dreams and showing them that all those doubts and fears are completely normal, but also to encourage them. It would have been such a yawn fest if I said, follow your dreams, right? That is so overused. So instead, I sent the same message, but I made it more impactful through storytelling. So I hope those examples help you grasp just how simple storytelling can be when writing engaging captions. And if you want more help nailing your social media captions, make sure you download my free social media cheat sheet below. And if you wanna learn how to write compelling calls to action at the end of your captions to make sure your readers are doing the thing you actually want them to do, then check out my next video where I'm sharing 24 CTAs to help you boost traffic, engagement, and sales. I will see you next week with a brand new video. Until then, I'm Alex, ciao for now. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that video, make sure to check out the next one from me right here. And you can click right here to get a free gift. We all know that copywriting is essential when it comes to growing and scaling your business, but copywriting alone does not a business make. Content marketing is on the rise and cannot be ignored, especially social media content like YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, you get it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the most of your social media content utilizing powerful and proven CTAs that follow the rule of three, R-L-S. 
And to make this as practical as possible for you, I'm also giving you a free social captions and CTAs cheat sheet loaded with writing prompts, swipe copy, and CTAs to help you grow and scale your social following. I will drop a link for that at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around.